All right, we have a special Halloween episode for the most part uh, out of the five we have. So we're going to be talking about Dracula. We're going to be talking about Pumpkin. We're going to be talking about ghosts and all this stuff and Superman. Uh, so stay tuned right now and let's get into it after the intro. <laughs> So we got some good stuff. We got some murder. We got some Dracula. We got all this stuff going on today. Uh, so before we start, uh, let me simp or shill for my own stuff real quick. <laughs> I'm not ever going to let that go. So yeah, somebody told me, uh, oh, you're just chilling for yourself. You know, you never really thought about comic. <laughs> I'm like, well, can I do both? Uh, so anyway, where let's talk about uh, my new Kickstarter. It's Lords of L.A., number two, and uh, this is the first uh, issue. This is one of the covers. Uh, of course, there's some covers now that have been retired from the uh, from the previous Kickstarter, uh, but you'll be able to get issue number one, which is 48 pages long, uh, and issue two, and uh, it's issue two uh, finishes up the uh, storyline uh, with the Lord of Vegas, as well as talk, talk you know, talking about uh, Lena, uh, so the artwork in here is pretty decent. I think so anyway. Uh, I think the coloring's pretty good too. And uh, we have plenty of nudity and stuff like that in here too. Uh, in fact, let me show you this. Um, oh, maybe it's not, uh, let me follow back further. So what we have is uh, Marilyn Monroe in here. Yeah, there we go. So Marilyn Monroe makes an appearance, and I have traditional vampire stuff going on, and a whole lot of blood and guts and, and nudity. So, <laughs> you know, we got some really good action taking place and things like that. So uh, I think everybody will be happy with it. But uh, check out the QR. <laughs> check out the. This is why I'm normally behind the camera. Uh, the, the QR code uh, will take you right to the page. Just get notified. We're pre-launching right now. We're, gonna, we're getting close to 250 followers after only a few days. I'd really like to get up to 300 before I launch. Uh, I am just waiting on the video, and we're ready to go. So anyway, that's uh, let's get started. But uh, I am your host, Frank Zenka. I am an award-winning screenwriter, novelist, comic book writer, as well as a working line producer, formerly of Hollywood. Now I'm in Atlanta as of two months ago. And of course, I'm waiting for the strikes to end, uh, just like everybody else. I wish that the uh, which would say I could stop asking for more, more, more. <laughs> All right, so let's get right into it. Uh, after I said right four times here, uh, we're going to talk about Batman Superman World's Finest, which is not part of uh, the Halloween side. But uh, this is uh, I skipped this issue because uh, I didn't I my comic book company or comic book shop didn't put it aside for me. Uh, so I uh, I missed it and I saw it in the rack. I'm like, oh, I don't think I ever finished that storyline. So uh, this is not Dan Mora, but I can't say that Superman's ever really looked better. I think Superman looks great in this issue. Uh, so this storyline, uh, yeah, you can't tell me that Superman doesn't look excellent in these pages. So what happened was there's a Kryptonian named Jax Ur who came to uh, Metropolis and to met out Superman. So he got the Riddler to write some stuff in Kryptonian, a, a riddle in Kryptonian, that only Batman and Superman together could figure it out. So this is like the first time that Batman and Superman are meeting as far as Mark Waid is concerned. And... Uh, so now they're teamed up together, so we got some good banter between them, and then Jack, we, have a big, we have a nice little fight between him and Jaxer, as you saw, and Batman and uh, Alfred, because Alfred's still alive in this one, uh, get taken to the Phantom Zone, uh, and Batman's costume is very much like the TV show, except for the bat symbol itself, but otherwise it looks pretty close to how it was in the 60s TV show. And then he tell Jaxer says, I'm not I'm not done with you yet. I'm gonna go kill Kandor. And Kandor is like 
Brainiac, uh, I guess, shrunk down one of the cities of uh, Krypton, and it's in like a bubble. It's in like a, a bubble, and, and he keeps that because he doesn't know how to enlarge it. So Superman keeps it inside the Fortress of Solitude. So as he's ready to destroy the entire city, Superman stops him, and Batman... Uh, oh, and he destroy his mom here. That's not nice. That is not nice to destroy my mommy's statue. So, so as they're fighting, uh, he tells Batman to go get the projector, the uh, Phantom Zone projector. And it looks like... <laughs> I'm sure that's how it looked in the 60s, but it looks like a real cheap light. <laughs> or You know what it looks like? No, I'll tell you what it looks like. What are the heaters? It looks like one of those heaters, <laughs> like a floor heater. So as they're beating each other, uh, Batman's uh, Superman's actually bleeding and everything like that during this fight. And as this is all taking place, uh, Jack says, like, I know Batman is sneaking up on me, and I'm not, you know, I can see I have x-ray vision just like you. And uh, he slaps him away, and he says, ah, oh, I have the projector, and I'm going to destroy it. Ah, oh, but... What they did was they injected it into the floor. Uh, they took the, put the pieces into the floor, so as soon as Jaxor stepped on it, he got sent back to the uh, the Phantom Zone. Uh, so that was pretty interesting, and then they collect Riddler, and then we have this uh, mysterious guy that's inside the Phantom Zone, and he's, I guess, trying to let everybody out? I don't know. So, but we never really find out. That's the epilogue, and of course we moved on to something else after that. Uh, so it was an interesting story. Do I think it'll make a good film or television show? Nah, nah, there's, there's plenty of better, like the cartoon first meeting of Batman and Superman, uh, with Lex Luthor and the Joker is far more interesting than this one. Uh, so I'm going to say no for that one, even though it was a fun read, but, uh, that's about the extent of it. All right. So let's get on to Dracula. Now we're going into our horror Halloween uh, events here. So we have Dracula. This is by James Tynan uh, the fourth. And I, I, some people will say they like the artwork, but I, I can't say I'm one of them. Um, so this is taking off from uh, the Universal Monsters from like the, the movies that they did back in the 40s and 50s. And, you know, this is supposed to be Renfield, but he never has a nose. I mean, Renfield never has a nose for all this artwork. He's like overly bright, bright as if he's glowing. I, I really don't know what's going on here. But so instead of Harker in the movie, we had this new character, Renfield, uh, that is being controlled by Dracula, and he eats bugs. That's his whole thing, that he eats bugs. And that's why they did that Renfield movie. Uh, with Nicolas Cage. And, uh, yeah, I mean, some of this stuff is actually pretty detailed. Like, you know, you get, uh, I think it's Seward. That's his uh, office. And they do allude to Van Helsing in here as well. And then we have, you know, Lucy and Nina having their conversation. And, you know, they're being generally, uh, you know, they're, they're just trying to, you know, have lewd comments, you know, so, or stories and talk about the deaths that happened on the, on the ship. And they talk about sex and all this other stuff that they wouldn't normally talk to, you know, with anybody else around besides the two of them. Um, and, uh, you know, we get these nice little splash pages and things to that effect. And of course, Dracula, uh, is going after, uh, he goes after both of them, Nina and Lucy, but, uh, you know, of course he only changes one of them completely. And, you know, then we go back to Renfield, and he's got, you know, this glowy face again. I, I, I don't know why he decided that the glowy face thing. Um, and then we have, this is really nice. I thought this was really nice. Um, it, you know, this is a kill. Let me get my hand out the way. And uh, so he's got a kill there from somebody on the street. And it's, you know, but, you know, this... This Dracula here, if you haven't seen, this Dracula here, I also just got the Frankenstein. I haven't gotten it yet. I bought it through Kickstarter. But this is by Legendary, right? I think that, yes, by Legendary. And this 
actually has the Lugosi, his face and visage through the whole thing, but this is a telling of the book. But instead of having regular Dracula, they use Bela Lugosi's face. And they, this is, this is great. This is non-color, it's all black and white. But the artwork in here, I mean, it is bar none. I mean, this is incredible. So it's going to be hard to beat this with this. Just FYI. Uh, so anyway, that's one of my favorite books uh, outside of the Aquaman one. And uh, so, I mean, the, the use of red and stuff like that is really good in here. But uh, I don't know. I, I, I still can't compare it. I mean, look at Renfield there. You actually see his nose in one of those uh, panels, but otherwise, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. So, uh, so anyway, the the doctor tells him that uh, you know they're gonna they're gonna try to cure him by taking his blood out and replacing it with different blood. So it's kind of like a transfusion, but not kind of like changing your oil, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> But uh, then he get with this weird thing where he kind of goes in all monstery. I assume that's just in his head because uh, he can't do that. And uh, and then he calls to Dracula to help him because he can't lose his blood. So and then that's the end of it. So it's okay. Uh, of course, would it make a good movie or television show? It's already been made into a movie, so nothing really to discuss there. Um, but this is uh, this adaptation is a little bit weird. Um, I'll stick with the original Bela Lugosi movie. Uh, so I don't know if I'm going to continue with that or not. A lot, a lot of people are praising it, but it's okay. As far as I'm concerned, it's okay. The other Dracula is much, much better. If you're going to pick between the two, buy the legendary one, man. That one's awesome. That one's awesome. Okay, and now let's get into a bit of murder. So, uh, Stephen Frank, uh, I've spoken to him many, many times. Uh, in fact, I was trying to do, uh, he has a vampire series as well uh that's pretty decent i was trying to do that into a, a board game but uh, uh it hasn't worked out but anyway so now i saw him at a convention and you know i wanted to buy something from him but uh not all the vampire stuff i already had i had already bought him out of every thought uh, of all the of his graphic novels i had already owned them all so uh so anyway i i saw you said we recommended this one to me and if you don't know who Stephen Frank is, Stephen Frank is the guy who did Iron Giant. So he did all the artwork for Iron Giant. Um, and then he, you know, of course he signed it to me and stuff like that. Um, but anyway, this it's interesting because this takes place in the Valley in Los Angeles. And uh, I recognize, of course, but a lot of the stuff that he's, he pulls up here is, you know, it was like 10 minutes from my house uh, at the time on my, you know, my apartment. So it was neat to see, you know, all the stuff. And he's got, you know, he's literally has, you know, street signs with the streets that I all recognize. And, uh, you know, he does things like this, Van Nuys and things to that effect. But this is about a detective. So he's a private detective that plays like honky tonk music on the side at night. And he, you know, he lost his wife and his daughter is still missing her mom. And she's trying to reconcile that. So her and her friend go out and, you know, try to, you know, uh, he, he tries to feel her or whatever else by meditating and things to that effect. And then you have this guy and his wife and his, uh, you know, his, his wife is this like blonde that doesn't have the best personality in the world, but she has her bodyguard and she's, you know, tries to make deals and things like that. I, I think she's selling some stuff on the side. Um, and you know, the, the detective is not really happy with his job because all he's doing is, you know, doing, uh, you know, traditional is my wife cheating on me, you know, and he, you know, takes photos and stuff like that. So, uh, he has a nice moment with his, uh, with his daughter because his daughter says that she saw the blonde and it reminded, uh, him, her of her mom. Uh, so they get, then I guess they barely talk about it. So they get, uh, and the artwork's, you know, 
traditionally, this is, this is how he draws. And uh, they get this nice moment where I guess since they don't talk about it at all, they, they kind of are, you know, they're kind of cold to one another. And this is like one of the first warm moments that they have. So that was kind of interesting. And here's, <laughs> here's his, uh, him going out to do <laughs> his, uh, thing. that's the jacket he has, which is pretty intricate, really. And I guess he thinks about his, uh, his wife. I guess she was at a, uh, a phone booth and she got taken out. Uh, but anyway, we have, we got some nice, you know, coloring and artwork of him at the club and his band. And he meets this other girl there. That's one of the thing. And they, they uh, end up sleeping together. Um, but he imagines, I guess this is, you know, his wife getting shot. And that's kind of what happened to her. Uh, and he, I guess he really doesn't know what happened specifically. Uh, but then he, this is the other band member that, or the other singer or whatever else that he ends up having sex with or whatever. Uh, it's hard to get the, so I thought, I thought this was pretty cool. So this is like, uh, the sun coming up around the valley. So of course I've seen <laughs> that kind of skyline before. Uh, it's pretty interesting. So anyway, so the blonde, I guess she kind of falls into the wrong people there. And uh, there's a gun pulled on her, but we don't know by who. And she goes, oh, why are you doing this? And the, the, the uh, bodyguard comes out and uh, a little too late and finds her brain splattered all over the walls. So, of course, the husband is the one that is uh, being blamed for it. Uh, and you know, they're all of the paparazzi and everybody else are rushing to the door to see if he's going to come out and the cops question him and all this stuff. And lo and behold, uh, who does he hire? He actually goes to the, uh, the club where the guy's playing at and wants to hire him to find out who killed his wife. And they escort him out. And as uh, the guy comes out, he's bum rushed and he's told not to get involved, which of course only makes him want to get involved that much more. And, uh, you know, he proceeds to kick their ass after getting his ass kicked. And of course, now he pledges that he's going to find out who it is. And that's how this particular one ends. So this is pretty thick and uh, the same type of thing with the vampire ones that he did, but this is only one part of it. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the guy knows how to be cinematic. So uh, I like it. Uh, I'm waiting to, you know, I'm, I don't know if I'm rushing. I have so many books I have to read. I'm not rushing out to buy the next one. Uh, but uh, it is interesting. And, yeah, I think it would make a really good film. Uh, kind of like, um, oh shoot, what was the name of the one with, uh, uh, that took place in the fifties or whatever else in the forties, uh, Hollywood, where they all were dressing like movie stars and stuff like that. Uh, confidential, something confidential. Uh, that one, that was an amazing film. So that, this kind of reminds me of that a little bit. All right, so let's get into... At last, the light. So this is uh, the money waster of the month, as far as I'm concerned. So, okay. I, I said, oh, wow. So I got this thing from Kickstarter, right? And I try to, you know, if I can, I try to support as many Kickstarters as possible because I'm one of them, you know? So I like people to support me, so I support other people. So this was pretty thick. I'm like, oh, wow, I'm, I'm getting... You know, a bang for my buck here. So, and the artwork's okay. I, I don't dislike the artwork. It's very stylized. But then, uh, it's exactly the same book on both sides. But it's a different language. He actually has three books in here of three different languages. That is the biggest waste of money that 
because I have two book, I have three books here, or I can only read one, right? So meanwhile, I don't know what he spent for all these extra pages that really are garbage for me. Which means everybody else in the United States is getting that same thing. So we overpaid by at least twice, right? To have this different kind of binding to have instead of it being saddle stitched. And the whole thing is only 20 pages. The actual story in here is only 20 pages, but this book is 60. Why? I don't understand. Why didn't you just print it? Three different books. <laughs> it, would, it would have been cheaper as far as I'm concerned. So I don't understand it. Uh, but uh, at last, Licht, because it's obviously German, uh, and I forgot what the other one was in here, but uh, what the other the other thing in here, but um, yeah, here's the, here's the the cover again on the inside because this is the second version. Uh, I don't know what it is. I don't know. I, I don't understand. Maybe a different dialect? I have no idea. But anyway, let's talk about the 20 pages that I could read in here. <laughs> so it's a bit of a ghost story. So it's about this couple uh, who you see the woman, and then the man is in a wheelchair, and they live on the coast, and there's a, a lighthouse, right? So they live on the coast so there's ships that go in there so literally they can see the lighthouse from their house and they realize that the lighthouse is not bright enough so she says i'm going to go out there and talk to the guy and make sure he knows that it's not bright enough and the husband can't do anything because he's in a wheelchair he's like all right well go ahead you know be careful so she goes in there and she goes all the way up to the top and she ends up seeing a every it's a woman, but it, it, she deteriorates as the light goes up and dims. Uh, so, you know, so she sees that ghost there, and you can see it in those two panels there, uh, where she kind of cocks her head at her. And here, here is the scene where she kind of deteriorates. So, uh, let's, I get the light. There we go. So you see how. She deteriorates throughout that whole thing. And then we find out that it's a woman who was involved in like a love triangle. And the, uh, the, the one guy who got jealous killed the other guy. And he's still alive. So one guy is dead. Here it is. So they... They were supposed to, he basically pulled a gun on him. He killed the other guy. And uh, I forgot what actually happened to the woman. But uh, apparently maybe she even killed it. He killed a woman too. I can't remember. Um, but, you know, here's him lurking. And she he follows her all the way up to the top of the, um, to the lighthouse. And then he ends up seeing his dead fiance or whatever she was to him and he says she says it's time to go and a uh, a lamp falls he gets ignited and he ignites the, <laughs> the lighthouse and she so he's on complete fire <laughs> and they say oh the light the lighthouse has never has never been brighter <laughs> But meanwhile, we know never have know what happened to the guy <laughs> that uh, uh, that was uh, running the thing to begin with. We never actually go see him. Yep, and then the next page is upside down <laughs> with a different language. So, would this make a good film or television show? No, no, it's not interesting enough. It, the, the 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 story is far too tiny. Far too tiny. Um, so I felt really let down when I was thinking I was getting this big, thick thing. And instead, by the time I got to the last page, it was upside down. 
and I'm like, what is, what's going on here? What's going on? <laughs> so no, it's a, the, it's interesting. It was a fun little read, but no substance whatsoever. It needed, it needed more. All right. And let's get into my last one. This is Punkin. And uh, Punk is another Kickstarter, and it even came with this cool little thing, a little postcard. So, I mean, the artwork's pretty good as far as the covers are concerned. This cover is not as good as some of the other ones. I'll, I'll show another cover here as well. But he's, this one's signed at least. And I hate that, you know, a lot of these people that run these Kickstarters don't sign them. Just, just sign it. What, what's the problem? This got two signatures on it. Uh, I mean, I can understand, like, Jimmy Pamiotti doesn't want to sign. I understand that. But these these are nobody guys. So this is a very traditional hack and slash, right? So I've read it twice. When he sent me the digital copy, I read that. And I don't usually write, read that, but it read very quickly. So I read that, and then when it came in the mail, I read it again. So it's one of the few things that I read twice. And so we start out in, like, this Halloween and we have this guy and this girl. It's kind of like a high school couple type of thing. And he says, uh, hey, uh, I, I don't know why you're being jealous. I never slept with that girl. I said, she said, you, slept, you said you did. He said, yeah, everybody said we did, but we never did. She's frigid and uh, nobody, nobody slept with that, that person. And uh, she, she tells him to get out. <laughs> Listen again. Get out of the car. And she drives away and he's like, So you were mad that I didn't I that you thought I slept with her, and now you're mad that I didn't sleep with her. So which is it? <laughs> but we find out there's a little more to that story. So uh that was before, and then we go into today. So this is like I guess a couple of years later or whatever else, and the guy is now not dating that girl anymore and he's having a party at his house for Halloween of course we have Halloween on both sides and we end up seeing pumpkin for the first time and he went out on his balcony to have a smoke and she's there and he's like whoa whoa what's going on why are you up here uh, he doesn't even realize she's there until like later and you know she takes a puff of a cigarette and things to that effect and they they chat uh, so they kind of banter back and forth, and he doesn't think it's all weird because it's Halloween. And then she realize, he realizes it's the girl that disappeared, the one that everybody said slept with her. So we got, you know, it's a, kind of a traditional, we've heard, we've seen that kind of story before. But anyway, she belts him in the face, knocks him out, and ties him up, and... She texts his ex-girlfriend, the one from the beginning, and, you know, she, she sat, uh, saddles him there and the whole bit or straddles him. And, uh, you know, she's like, well, how can you do this to me or whatever else? So we kind of assuming that she's dead, right? And this is kind of her coming back kind of like the crow. So that's how I kind of think. And then she alludes to the fact that she's going to, you know, bite his dick off. <laughs> And then she says, don't worry, I'm not going to do that. But then somebody else walks in the door who's dressed like, like Zorro, and he's like, oh, I'm sorry, sorry. Uh, sock on the door, guys. Sock on the door. It's not that hard. So uh, so he just walks out when he could have helped the guy. <laughs> so she takes out this big machete, and he says, no, I'm not going to bite your dick off, but what I have for you is far, far worse. And then, oh, it's one year ago. So then we go back to the ex-girlfriend uh, at the time after she drops him off, and she picks up this other girl on the uh, who's riding their bike, and you realize that they kind of are in cahoots, and they're going back to the girl who's pumpkin now. They're going back to move the body because they don't like where they buried it. So apparently, these two girls killed that other girl. And uh, hid the body like in like a barn. So they go there and they find that the body's gone, and instead it's got like a growing pumpkin patch as well. Okay. And then they see somebody kind of lurking in the barn door, 
and all there's this like hand count. And remember, this is a year before the scene where we get with her kidnapping the guy. So apparently she was reincarnated or something to that effect. And uh, poor Chad, he actually is a Chad. Uh, look what she did to him. She cut his head off. She made a pumpkin out of his head, gouged out his eyes, put the pumpkin on his head, and put a candle where his brain is. Poor Chad. Poor, poor Chad. Uh, so, anyway, yeah, pumpkin. I'd see this for sure. I would definitely go see this. In fact, um, I didn't get to see Terri Terrifier 2 because uh, I just didn't get a chance. And now it's back in the theater, so I think I'm going to go Thursday to go see it. Uh, but yeah, I, I liked this. I liked it the first time I read it. I liked it the second time I read it. So it's, it's, there's nothing original. There's nothing original in it. It's got, it's borrowing from other things. Uh, but I like it anyway, you know, so it's not original, but it's got an original look and feel and it's got some interesting characters. So I like it. I like it. So I'm going to say yes to pumpkin. And this is issue two. I have no idea what happened in issue one. I assume the murder happened, probably. But I didn't get it. And now issue three is coming out. So, anyway, you might want to check that out because I think it's going up on Kickstarter. I saw, like, the pre-launch page come out. All right. Uh, at last, the light. No. <laughs> no. Too, way too tiny. Way too tiny. Uh, Palomino. Led by Stephen Frank. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I am liking that one. Uh, it would it would make a cute little uh, you know uh, murder mystery type of situation. Yeah, Dracula. I'm gonna say the original one by Legendary is far better. Far better. And World's Finest. No. Yeah. So that's my two things. And of course, remember I got my little more stuff. Uh, so that's it for uh, for number episode twenty six. So uh, remember to click the QR code over here um, and get signed up for Lords of LA number two. Again, 48 pages, so you don't have to worry about a little teeny book. But it is still saddle stitch, but it's, it is pretty thick. And uh, so you're getting a lot more story. That's why I do that. I do like a double issue rather than just getting 20 pages because you wait so long for it sometimes. You wait like months. So I, I like to give you know, more than what you're expecting. All right, so that's uh, that's it for me. Click the QR code if you can. I'm not even going to talk about the Tales of Ravenor. I'm going to focus on uh, on this. And plus, uh, if you're familiar with uh, Mark Spears, uh, he does classic monster art. And he and I are working on a monster game right now, a card game. So uh, and I'm doing going to be play testing. I just got the cards in. Uh, in fact, maybe in my next video, I'll, I'll show that off because uh, I got a like a tester copy in uh, right now. So it's got plenty of work still needs to be done on it, but it's, it would be cool to s just for me to show you how, like, how things kind of develop in a game. Uh, so this is like the first thing before we change everything. <laughs> so anyway, happy Halloween, guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And helping me grow the channel out. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a middle finger. However you like it. And I'll see you on the next one. And check out. Oh, I did it right this time. Uh, check out my other videos. All right. Talk to you soon.